Greetings everyone, here's Ludwig again and this is the game Strategic Command World War 1. This is my new series uh, match uh, against the uh, AI, so single player game. Uh, and this will be now part number 3 or turn number 3, end of August. Always, if you load the game, you can uh, change your in game some stuff. So, it is always possible, I think, to adjust. So, you're flexible, but normally I keep it here. But it is always possible if you want to change something, you can do it here. So, last turn, more or less, uh, there was some defense battle in East Prussia. Uh, Hindenburg just arrived the turn before, and they maybe now. I sent him to uh, Posen to take more or less the battle of the Pol German Polish army. Uh, so I have here one, uh, two army corps, one in East Prussia and one uh, in Poland. The Austrians are trying more or less uh, to hold the line here against the Russian onslaught. So far is okay. Uh, some casualties. The problem is really uh, the Russians have more and more people and uh, the Austrians. You can always reinforce your units but this consumes uh, a lot of uh, money and in the long run you run out of money because you don't have enough money left for investment in new units or in upgrade in a and you know lots of this so you must be a little careful uh, hold uh, some town for up to the last moment and pay all what you have will not benefit you maybe in the long run because you really must have an eye on this uh, uh, morale modifications. So you can see that Serbia lost a bunch of morale points because they lost their capital, Belgrade. Russia also lost some points simply because they have your units uh, more or less uh, not dying but uh, getting damaged. And uh, maybe they also get a minus because Serbia lost Belgrade. I don't know. This is always internal events. I don't really play so much the Entente. Uh, yeah. And Austria is uh, also naja, two points down. And Germany have even one points. Mainly because I think I destroyed some units and you get a morale bonus. And... I think I also count, uh, conquered some Belgium towns. Mm. No, for Belgium I think you don't get points. You can see here always if you get points for this. I think Belgium is not a French city, so it's not counting. Uh they all belongs to Belgium, so I don't count, conquer a French mine. Ah, yeah, here. This is a French mine. It's a, Here is a border, so not so easy to see, but the red is a border. So because I conquer this mine, I get 15 victory points every turn for this. And the French nation is more or less losing this 15 victory points each turn. But at the same time... Here in East Prussia, the Russians, they also took one of my villages. So the Russians getting 12 points and I lose here 12 points. So it is always uh, given and taking. So normally the Russians are successful against the Austrians and they take here some stuff. But they are losing against the Germans. So the Germans are normally always successful against the French people. But the, the Germans are also suffering higher casualties. And the British normally have never the issue that they're losing some towns. They're only losing points by battle. Roughly. Good. So I get the uh, money again. So the first thing I do is normally you can say, okay, is there some unit you must reinforce? 
Uh, I don't like to reinforce as long as possible. I try to avoid this, but uh, sometimes it is necessary. Uh, this unit is a denying. I don't really expect here to attack because all this is uh, units are, um, you can see, they are heavy fortified. You cannot attack them directly with infantry. You need to have heavy artillery or you need at least uh, for two, three units around to attack or you will bleed dry. This is stupid to attack here. So I give maybe this unit a... Uh, oh, not it. I want a reinforce. To get it to full power, this is all fine. This unit is too broken. It make no sense to reinforce this now, it's too expensive. So I only try to get the, the nearly bro ready units completely ready. And uh, the rest I think I can call... I send them back to the east, because I don't need here so many troops. And they are broken, so they must uh, recover. Or I don't want to spend the money now because I would normally spend the bulk of my money first for A and D. So I, the damage units I send to the east. If I arrive here in two three turns, and then I have maybe enough money to uh, repair them and or refit them. And I also need a little more uh, fighting power in the east. And cavalry normally I always send to the east because uh, German cavalry is maybe roughly the same attack value and fighting power like a uh, Russian infantry corp, but more mobile. But against French units, and especially if they are always dig in, then the cavalry have no use more. So this guy is also a little broken. So this is my reinforcements for the east. So at the same time I can uh, bring in here additional units. The French getting stronger and stronger by turn, so sooner or later they will maybe uh, attack me, so I must be prepared for this. So I can also advance here one more hex, and then dig in. Then, and uh, yeah, if you, you can leave your entrenchment, but if no unit take over this entrenchment, then the entrenchment more or less will fall apart, and then you must rebuild it. So if you have a new, you can, but you can normally change and uh, swap units. You can also swap units if you hold the shift, left shift, then more or less a um, hero heart. But uh, if you do this, uh, the units will normally have, a, I think, a morale and a fatigue uh, mm, mm, handicap. Or cost to pay because uh, it is more or less. I think uh, uh, I don't know how the game will. It's like a bad traffic, and then everyone gets stressed out or something like this. Uh, but uh, I think you can only make one. I don't know if you can make one rohard per day or many. I think oh, you can only one unit can only one rohard. Okay. Anyway, so now here, first I check if my units are under command. I, uh, I get here also a lot of uh, reinforcements. These are more or less like a backup course you can reserve. So these are more or less like uh, conscripts units. Normally I also like to send them to the east. At least some units. And this maybe I keep here. Good. So, first I check if the units at the front are all connected. This units are maybe I don't need connected now. They're not at the front line so far. Oops. Where's my other HQ? Ah, oh, here. Okay. This unit is connected. Oh, looks like this guy is not connected, I just realized. No one take care of him. Oh. <laughs> but these are frontline units. Frontline units, they are all connected. The red one are also connected. For some reason, I don't know why these two guys don't get information. But this guy is connected. Hmm. Very strange. Hmm. Sometimes... 
Okay, I must move here a little more. So the big question is now how to continue here against Belgium. I normally must, uh, if possible, you try to take all of Belgium and also maybe this, uh, yeah, at least Lille and Boulogne. This, if you can take this port, is a huge uh, um, bonus for the J German submarine in a war later on. Uh, you can try to go more, but normally this is a, this river here is normally latest where the French will stop you. If you can take all up to the river, this is already a huge win for the Germans. So in original, the Germans was already at this river. Yet here, I think the big battles where the Germans more or less uh, then fall back and gave up. Um. Good. My recon airplane is uh, not in range. I cannot really recon anything. This uh, Dutch uh, Belgian troops are in the fort. I normally don't like to attack them so much because they are only. Uh, I mean, it costs me too much attack value to only take out uh, this uh, small detachment. I normally like to attack more corps. They have more value. The question is where I want to take. Uh, more or less all of my units are not in direct uh, preparation. Uh, maybe I entrench... No. This guy must walk forward and entrench. This is already in trench, trench. Then I move here forward. Also in trench, but I must rotate. So I have uh, covered to all of the east, west and south, only nothing here. There I can go with this guy. A trench here. Oh, I think I make a mistake. Ooh, I put the trench wrong. Ah, yeah, can happen. A trench here. HQ must walk normally more forward. So I, this is a big problem. You can always push more, or you can go steady. Maybe like this. I need more forces. Maybe here. HQ can walk here. Hmm. Good. Not uh, no real attack here at the western front, but I more or less prepare to attack. I can maybe strike here. I have the opportunity to strike here or here. I can also go for Antwerpen uh, if I really want. Uh, but if I do this, then the capital will fall into Ypres. So I normally like to try to take first this city. Because once you take this, then they also this is a cut off, I think. Uh, yeah. Good. It's 
I think okay. This was the German Western Front. Uh, I still bring in here additional troops to the east. I can maybe... make a little scouting here. I can change the position. And now I try to not more rush walking so much so that my units can simply slowly then recover. Here's the Russian cavalry, they are also scouting and uh, they're also trying to sneak by and try to take uh, important cities where you can see some national morale objective. So if uh, the enemy is taking this kind of cities, then there's always some bonus hit against the morale. Normally the nation conquers the city, get some points, but the nation is losing them, have at least lost additional morale points. Sometimes you can get this, if you take the cities back, you get also some morale points back, but never the same amount you lost before. Good. Here I can make some... So, uh, this is like recon, I get some information if there's something, but first I check if the unit is connected. Yeah. So I also must get my HQ normally more uh, south, because I'm out of range here. So I make first a scout. Okay, this looks like there's only some block units. They're not really attacking me. Then I can move like this. HQ also have a little defense. There's some attached uh, guard units, but they are not really. They cannot really take on any real amount of uh, battle. Uh, I mean, attack power. So one corp can attack maybe in one turn, then you lose some of your HQ. And again, HQ really better never take part of any battle. But this is also why later in the war, if you have uh, bombers, uh, the tactical bombers, you normally always try to find enemy artillery or enemy HQs and try to attack them, because then you can create uh, most damage to them. So at the east pressure, my Small detachment is even strong enough to take on the Russians because the Russians have no uh, defense and they're an open field and I have the, the attack bonus. This makes sense because the detachment is normally cheaper so I can replace it with lower cost compared to the Russians to replace their corp. Uh, yeah, I have here still higher losses, but I think it's okay. You can also see that the unit is now grayed out. I think this is always if the readiness is less than 50%. This is also some factor that let you simply say, okay, this unit is normally not more combat ready. So it means more or less if I have no additional forces, it makes sense to attack this again because they normally will flee. They will try to run away often. Uh, it also tells you that this unit is better not more used in active. So normally, if this is now my turn, I would say, okay, I take with you this unit, it gets gray, then oh, okay, better flee the battle. Uh, here, there's some Russians, they're trying to penetrate my lines. I check again, okay, all of these units are under command. Oops. So I attack here over the river, minus 20. But uh, because I have here a preparation attack, uh, I get also some bonus. At the end, I can create here a lot of damage against this Russian unit. They say, okay, do this. Fine. Now, because here this, the Russians coming closer to my HQ, I better go one, to, uh, one hex back. And I can walk to this... Uh, Fort level, protect my HQ. At the same time, I can use this guy. 
moving up and attack again. Okay. And in my cavalry we can normally take out the guy. But now it's really time for my cavalry to fall back. Maybe... Maybe he... I can better stay here. To make sure that no one attack my HQ. Uh, then I have only the option where, how I defend this town or I simply give it up. Sometimes it's really better to say, okay, I battle, inflict damage and then I fall back. You don't must really defend against everything. Here's also a good opportunity to attack uh, the Russians. Uh, it's always if this unit, uh, how is the readiness and morale, like this readiness is 70. This guy have only 60, this guy have no ground cover, this have ground cover, and also if they are connected to HQ and what kind of HQ. Uh, I cannot see, I, I don't have enough information who is this guy, but sometimes you get more information, then you know how good is this, uh, who is the commander, and then you can normally also see how good is his skills. But you will normally not see if what unit is connected to the HQ. Anyway, so I could attack here now. This sounds not so good. This sounds much better. So I do this. Simply inflict damage. Ah, and then I force him back. Good. And that is okay. I think this is enough. I really do must do much more. I try to hold this position, but I cannot reinforce more because this unit attacked already. This unit, I, uh, I can also give elite. Uh, uh, yeah. If a unit have at least uh, one <coughs> experience medal, means you can also give it uh, additional reinforcements. Like this unit have already, this is overstrength, so it's have 11 because it's elite corp, they've had like experience, so it's have like a additional units it touched. And uh, if this these additional units are dying, you don't lose experience. You, it means you are stronger in attack and defense, and if you only you lose units up to down to 10 so if i lose the only the one unit go down to 10 then i don't lose experience but on the other side you must pay elite reinforcements reinforcements so if i buy one unit uh, it cost me only 22 uh, maybe they change this i think before it was double the cost i'm not more sure if uh, i can what was the normal price for a unit uh, i think i don't have more unit left Oh, I can have not check more if uh, what is the normal price for reinforcements of a unit. No. Good. Uh, no, I better stay here. So with the Germans, I'm more or less done. I'm more or less focused only for counter-attack against the Russians. Because I don't have really the power to do more. I don't have also the strategic uh, opportunity to really go on the offense and in Belgium I more or less only bring my units in a position to maybe take out Belgium next turn and uh, inflict some damage against the French and I also must prepare for the counter attack of the French army at the same time I move units to the east to help out so the, let's only let me now wait for the or handy, handle this uh, well, British attack on my high seas fleet uh, so of course you try to attack with ships have no damage up to now and uh, oh, let's see because you can normally move ships attack and then move back it's still possible so I try maybe to use here this pre dreadnought 
a tick. And then you get morale bonus. Because for ships, it's always this, if you sink a ship, you always get morale bonus. Because uh, ships are always something like uh, uh, a, a pride or a, a, a treasure. I don't know why, how you really want to call it, but uh, you can always make a big uh, propaganda victory out of this and uh, say, oh, we sink so many tons and so many ships and uh, this will always boost the morale at the home front. And luckily, I cannot here enter the, the port. And these ports are both blocked. Normally, I like to go directly to a port. Well, no, it's not possible. Anyway, so I go here back first. This destroyer only two. This, making, this unit is too weak, so I don't even try to attack. I fall back. This are battle cruisers, and these are light cruisers. So light cruisers, of course, I like to go with battle cruisers. Oh, but now I run in a French ship. Luckily, I am not in a yeah, direct uh, attack. Normally, sometimes this can happen if you run in the ship that is fire on you. But I think it's up to the... Sometimes it's working, it's happening, and sometimes not. So this is a French ship. Okay, French uh, destroyer, and this is a British light cruiser. Ah, yeah, well then I take it. Ooh, try to fall back. Now I use my light cruiser to finish off the destroyer. And also get some points. Of course, the destroyer is not so value than other ships, so you get only little points for this. Uh, so you always try not normally to attack the enemy ship with something bigger on your own. So this is a light cruiser, so I normally like to have a heavy cruisers. I have any heavy cruiser left. What is not damaged? Mm, looks like not. I can use my dreadnoughts, but this is normally the capital ships. I have only a destroyer left. Now yeah, good. So then I sink this light cruiser. What damage? Ah, okay. Fall back. So this is the Battle of Helgoland, and in reality there was also this battle of the, that the British come in 1914, very early and surprising the Germans, and I think sunk, and the Germans lost the first Battle of Helgoland for sure. Uh, it was nothing really super important, so I think Germany lost one or two light cruisers, something like this, but uh, because the British are very aggressive at the beginning. Because everyone was thinking, okay, the war is only this summer and then it's over. So if you won't have any decisive battle, and the British never lost any navy battle for a long time. So everyone expected something like this. But the Germans were simply surprised. Good, uh, maybe I can try to sink the ship. Ah, more damage than they trying to escape. So now is a big question, uh, you want to attack here and try to sneak on but I don't know if there are more ships I don't see it here's this fog of war if I go here in then maybe I, uh, I can try to use destroyers they're cheap oh, yeah, okay. and return Okay, successful. Oops. And this is East Friesland. I mean, uh, this is East, East Friesland uh, is, uh, uh, yeah, everyone, I don't know. This is West Friesland, this is East Friesland, and this is Friesland, and this is North Friesland. And these islands 
I come from. So I come from this island here in the coastline of Germany, my hometown, East Island. But uh, there are normally more islands, you can only see here two. Uh, my battle cruiser, I, uh, my battleship I like to repair. But I don't have the money now. I don't want to invest any money now in the Navy, so I keep it like this. I think this was a successful defense operation, but it was only some destroyers, nothing really important. Uh, the British have much more and uh, can replace it. So I have here now my submarines. You can have your submarines on hunt or silent. Silent is more or less than you can sneak under enemy ships, but the, the range of your ships are, are, I think, half or even less. But this is more or less to avoid, and then you can you can always penetrate every blockade. But if you run into a destroyer, I think destroyers always have the possibility to detect you. So, I can bring my sub now here on the supply line. I like to normally move non-stop, because the enemy get the detection and know where your sub was and intercepted your cargo ships. So, this is why you ne will normally never stay with your subs at the same position. So, this is now only the blockade from Ru uh, British supplies going to Russia. There is also the supply line from Canada to UK and from US to UK. And here is more. Here is India to UK and here is Egypt to UK. The British are always sucking in all of the free stuff oh, yeah. good this is normally everything with Germany now now I can go for Austria uh, and at the end I make A and D so Austria I think I must rebuild my units first this army is still broken I have here no yeah, here I can attack I could attack here The Serbia troops are weak, but my units are also not the best now. Let me check the supply situation is okay. Everyone have at least six, even more. So I keep it like this. I first reinforce normally the stronger units because it makes no sense to get a five to seven or something like this. If you want reinforced, you better reinforce always to ten. So I reinforce this two units. Plus maybe this guy. So here one unit costs only 11. Ah, yeah, okay. So elite reinforcements cost double price. I have, I must make sure that I have some money left. Uh, and here I can entrench. And here in the source, ah, this guy is not connected. Ah, yeah. So now the unit was walking, or I had already some activity, so I cannot change it more. I must remember this next turn so that I more or less give up this unit and take this guy in command of this HQ, and then this HQ can get the other one. Okay, so I don't really have you much more to do with Austria. Austria is really only going for Serbia and try to hold the Russians. This is normally much more costly. Uh, let's see. Two. And uh, if there's no big or good new opportunity to attack, then don't attack. No one say you must attack. What I must do is better try here, dig in. This is okay. Here I can reinforce. Cavalry is normally not good for defending. So I call them back and... Uh, here. Then move in the infantry.
So I could uh, do this entrench move here because in this guy you don't need entrench because there is already a trench. So you can save the point. This guy is weakened that for sure. So I call him back. Then this guy can go here. One more infantry unit for here. So that is enough. And the scout airplane I can send here. Not too much activity. And the Austrian Navy is always lack of funds. No money to really do anything with the ships. The Austrians spend all the money for this uh, big battleships. So they have uh, one, or I think later they get second dreadnought. Uh, the dreadnought design, I mean, they will never was active in the war, but uh, they have triple towers. They have a lot of firepower, uh, but they're lacking completely any submarine and anti-mine uh, equipment. So, I mean, under Underwater damage these ships cannot handle. This was the reason why later at the end of the war the, the Italys they more or less I think they get a torpedo or something on one of these British uh, this Austrian battleships. Uh, one hit when this ship sunk so quickly because the, the design is completely only for navy engagement without torpedoes without mines and. Uh, uh, the British and the French also lost a lot of ships against torpedoes and mines. This was simply a new technology, no one really cared so much at that time. Good. And I don't really have here much more to do this turn. The Ottomans are still not ready, so I move them here. Move around, move the small units back. Uh, yeah, there's not more to do. So the Ottomans are now at 31% uh, to enter the war. This you can always see here easy, quickly. Because uh, I think the German battle crews arrive here and I also send some money to the Ottomans to found their military. So they are more yeah, in favor. So the Ottomans are normally who enter uh, the war more or less for sure on the central power side and the British always also enter the the war for sure. Italy and America is not a must. You With Italy you have more or less a choice. You can more or less pay out the Italys and say okay we give you some certain amount of uh, land and cities. The Austrians must do this. They must give more or less up here some areas in the north then Italy is more or less out of the war. It's still possible, but very unlikely that they enter the war. But this will give Austria a huge um, disadvantage in the long run because they're losing a lot of morale by damage because it's like betray of their honor. But this will happen later. Good. So now the last thing what I will do is uh, going again for research. This is now with Ottomans. I still have uh, no money, so I can don't do anything. Uh, here I have just only 122 and you cannot go in minus, so I cannot go here for the next level. I think it's also not even possible, This you, they don't allow you. But what I need is maybe additional money. So I will go here for the second money. Now, now money left. With the Germans, here. The infantry you can only uh, develop one by one, so it's not even possible. Even if I have the money, you cannot go double. Other stuff you can go double or triple or whatever you want. What I need is with the Germans is normally uh, the Germans have already navy warfare one, so the, this is also a boost for ships. I think compared to the Austrians, they don't have this. And the Ottomans also. 
this is like the Germans. I think the Germans, the British, they both have uh, this a better navy warfare already. The French, I'm not so sure. Uh, you always, I, normally, I also need anti-submarine warfare because the British and the French they also have submarines. At least have uh, level one will help a lot. Ground attack airplanes are good because this will make out of your scout airplanes also really ground attack airplanes. Uh, and gas shell production is it's really you get normally every heavy artillery unit get one shell per turn I think or two shells per turn but if you increase this you get more shells I think one or two more shells per turn oh yeah you can see each level of shell production increase your artillery unit supply of shells by one per friendly turn then you can simply shell the unit more and then the unit is more de uh, have less morale left and it's more easy to uh, kick out of the hex. So this is good. This is more shells. Nothing more. I think this also... This is better heavy artillery. The Germans are already to level, uh, trying to get this. So this is bigger guns, this is more shells. It's two different things. And here are uh, tank warfare, this is uh, how good you are, and these are the tanks itself. But you can never have tanks before 1960 normally. Uh, still, I would say with Germany it's important to have production because in Germany you produce a lot of stuff in the long run, so you get the discount will always pay out. So I go for this. And I also want to go for, normally I like the better uh, fighter. And uh, anti-submarine is important, even it's for Germany. And... Uh, more shells are for free. So you must also make, a, you can think about this or better. Some of these technologies are more or less give you a bonus for free. Like, I mean, here you get more money. This makes everything more cheap. This is, you get more shells for free. This is your, you can entrench stronger, deeper, not only level one, then level two. This is all more or less for free. But infantry weapons, you must buy you must upgrade your units. It's not for free. You pay for this. This you also pay for this. This pay. This is all payment. You can more or less say everything on this side is you must buy upgrades, and this is more or less all for free upgrades. It's always give you some the uh, passive um, boost. This is to say good. And now I end the turn and see what the allies are doing, what the Entente. The French, more mobilization. More Siberian units arrive in Moscow. This is my Polish block force for free. Ah yeah, and Sanders arrive in Constantinople. And more French. Oh. And then you can see already there is some disruption against my convoys. And the British still making blockade. So, and now this is more or less like the same. So there are British ships blockading or intercepting my shipping out of Norway. So I normally get 18, but only 11 arrive. 7 are lost. Okay, so I still pay now money for the Ottomans and for Hindenburg. In Austria, I ship money. And the Austrians, they're still getting money from Germany, but they're paying for these Polish units. And the Ottomans, they have nothing. So the India are sailing for Egypt, uh, for Europe. 
you can more or less make a decision uh, if they're going for Arabic helping in Kuwait against Ottomans or now more or less I think this is a if you give the battleship to the Ottomans then there's not like this is, needs uh, much more time for the Ottomans to enter so you maybe send your India units to help in Europe but if you keep the, the battleship for the British Navy then you better send your maybe your Indian army to uh, Arabic because then the Ottomans are enter the war more quickly and then you need help there so this is always this event stuff So, this was the price. Uh, like in reality, the, the bigger problem for the central powers is normally you start strong, but normally you will you get weaker, or you don't Germany or the central powers don't get weaker over time, but they, they are getting not stronger, and the Entente will normally outproduce you simply in the wrong one. They're getting more and more units. They have more. They have a bigger pool. Especially if enter is once Italy enters the war, then the shift of power is really uh, yeah, against the central powers. This is why Germany need normally some su success at the beginning against the French, or you can also try to focus on a complete victory against the Russians. But to only hold the line will normally doom the central powers. Good, this is Albania. So Albania prepared to enter the war on the side of the Entente. Now it's my submarines intercepting the shipping to Russia. So you can see that the British they choose to send the India units to Europe for take command. This is more or less the same like with Hindenburg. Then you can see that uh, Albania is joining or uh, prepared to join the war with for the Central Powers uh, for the Entente. And uh, I intercept here five MPP, not so much. And I get one more sub. So this is a new sub where everyone sends this. Oh, doesn't matter. I can put it maybe here. Good. So a new turn. Now we are already in uh, mid of September. And uh, the Entente not really attack me too much. A little passive. But it's, I think, okay. If the beginning, sometimes, I think it's a big, the game was new. I mean, many years ago. The, the AI always attacked too aggressive. And they tom completely bleed out some units and make nonsense. So now they more or less attacking sometimes. Okay, you can say uh, makes sense, but they also try to dig in and uh, simply because if they dig in like this, you still must overcome them. 
uh, it's not too bad, I, I would say. Of course, a real thinking human is always better, but it's not terrible bad. Good. So, see you next time uh, for the next turn. Take care. Bye-bye.